sure, Mr. Beauvais, that you have not seen him? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais, you're so kind. The next time I'm at Cezanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Hey, goodbye, then. Goodbye. Ah, a little bottle of red. Come on, next. Can I help you? You're a policeman. Um, my name is Gus McPherson. I'm an American journalist. I would like to ask you a couple of questions about the Orfei case. I do not deal with you journalist types. I understand. It's always intimidating to come up against a journalist. In any case, I'm not supposed to speak to the police either. Shall we make a little exception? Does your rag have a name? You know, it's a newspaper in New York. The News. The New York News. I have a brother-in-law who works at the News. Do you know him? Jules Quincampoix. I don't know who you're talking about. Are you sure he works at the news? There are dozens of daily newspapers in New York, you know. Maybe it's the Post News or the Early News. Heck, I can hardly tell them apart myself. Forget it. Hmm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road. Suitcases are heavy. And do not forget, young man, the elevator is still out of order. Oh, brother! What can I get you, sir? Give me a bottle of red. Sir? My name is McPherson. I'm a private detective. You really are a private eye? Just like in the movies? You've even got the hat? And you're American too. Huh. Private Dick. Yeah. A real detective. Investigating a real murder. The one at the Orfei. Golly. I wish I was a detective. So you're investigating the Hotel Orfei murder? If you agree to help me, you kind of become my assistant. Really? Of course I agree. An adventure. <laughs> Finally. Tell me about the evening. What was the atmosphere like? Yes. It really was a most unusual evening. Did you have any unusual customers that evening? You must be joking, my friend. Strange customers are all in a day's work for a waiter. That evening was no exception. 
like the man who spent the evening alone at a table over there, besides the window. He left empty-handed, been stood up, I imagine. What do you mean? A series of strange coincidences. The telephone was no longer working. The lift breaking down at the office, uh, that still has not been repaired, incidentally. And to top it all, a violent storm breaking out just as the door closed behind the last customer. First thing the next day, I found out a double murder took place, right here, almost right above my head. Does the elevator often break down at the Orphée? You'll have to check with reception at the Orphée. I have no idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Are you the manager? My name's McPherson. I'm from the international office of WAI, Worldwide American Insurance. I'm investigating events that took place in your hotel several days ago. The murders. The insurance company. Perfect. The Whites left, shall we say, a rather substantial bill that really needs to be settled. You are here about the bill. The bill? Yes, that's right. I've come to settle their hotel bill. This bill is rather high. You are responsible for settling it. The total sum is exactly 2,500 francs. Twenty-five hundred francs? But, but the Whites only stayed a few days. I can't pay that much. The list is long, sir. Luxury clothing, sumptuous meals, a room booked one month in advance with clear instructions that it should remain available at all times. Strange couple, those whites. Did you know that they barely set foot outside during their stay? In fact, I, I do not remember Madame ever going out aside from that last evening. They must have enjoyed our comforts. I cannot pay. Help yourself from what they must have left as a deposit. Well now, we have a problem because the Whites left no security. Nothing in the safe, no money, nothing. Which is why the police deduce that it must have been theft. Even their suitcase has disappeared. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. Promises and empty handed, huh? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. You cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty?
Dr. Kaufner's office, please. It's over there, right at the end of the hall. Make sure you don't get lost. Come in. Dr. Frank Kaufner. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? I'm Gustav McPherson. I've come here to ask you a few questions about the White case. Tell me what you want to hear. So, you are investigating the incident at the Hotel Hofe. Yes, Doctor. Your professional opinion on the murders. Did Inspector LeBrun send you, Mr. McPherson? I'm a private eye. A private detective? Uh, then someone is showing an interest in the White's murder. A friend of the family was worried, and I'm trying to clarify the situation. A friend? Are you quite sure? The Whites had no friends in Paris. At least, not as far as I know. Appearances can sometimes be deceptive, Dr. Kaufner. That's why I would like to clarify this situation by gathering as much information as possible. I am at your disposal, Mr. McPherson. How can I help you? What can you tell me about the scene of the crime? The police have released very few details. The man who committed this murder, and I stress the fact that he is a man, is probably quite overwhelmed at the present time. This crime was committed under the influence of a sudden impulse, without premeditation. His act is now haunting him. He is not himself. And you think the motive for the murder was theft? That is what the police say. But does the official version reflect Inspector Lebrun's true opinion? This murder could be the first in a long series of crimes. What could be the motive of such a crime? Love, hate, revenge. Those are the three reasons behind so much human bloodshed, Mr. McPherson. It's awful. You are discovering the dark side of Paris, Mr. McPherson. And do you have a suspect, Mr. McPherson? If I had a suspect, I would not be here, Dr. Kaufner. It has been a most pleasant conversation, but unfortunately, I cannot afford you more time, Mr. McPherson. I hope I have satisfied your curiosity. not seen you in ages. Berenice, what a surprise. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you know a certain Théo Malé? Uh, no, but surely the owner does. You're lucky he's in right now. You know knows everyone you know. You're as charming as ever. Thank you, Berenice. Ah, uh, call me baby like everybody else. Right, I've got to run too, cutie. You know, work. See you soon, okay? Yes, uh, anyway, you know my address. Come up and see me sometime. Ciao. Ciao. Come on, let's see that hot hand of yours. Queen and her three sisters. Oh no, are you doing it on purpose or what? 
Three of a kind. You beat my three aces. Right, I've had it. I'm off. Ah, Hulot, you're not going now, are you? Not when I was about to relieve you of your car. Don't start, Malay. Do not think that you can get away with things just because you have settled your bar tab. Why it is McPherson? Hey, McPherson, come over here! McPherson? Who is that? Another American in Paris, who is broke. Let me introduce you. McPherson, let me introduce Théo Mallet. Hi. Right, I will leave you two. I have work to do. Hi. I get the feeling I've seen you before somewhere. Have you ever been to New York? Oh no, Mac. I'm so absent-minded sometimes. The jacket, the Orfe. You're a doorman at the Orfe. If you are interested in the suit, I will give you a good deal. As far as I'm concerned, it is ancient history. I bet you know all the hotel's comings and goings. It's little secrets, it's clientele. You are looking for an informer who can fill you in on what is going on at the Orfe, right? A few days ago, something happened at the Orfe. Something truly awful. As you probably know, an American couple was found dead there. Murdered. I'm reliably informed you were on duty that night. You even had a drink in the cafe next door, the Nantes, with someone suspicious. Maybe even the murderer himself. Does that mean anything to you? Find someone else. Frankly, I have nothing to say. You, you deny having met any man with a mustache at the Nantes Cafe on the night of the murder. Yet you were seen there. Did I hear right? You are calling me a liar? Well, the liar bids you farewell. Good day to you, sir. Gus McPherson? Long time no see, old boy. I traded in my brushes for Sherlock Holmes' magnifying glass. It's a good case, Udo. A real investigation with dead bodies and everything. And here I was thinking you had turned into an honest soul. Hey, I'm, I'm not trying to stir up any trouble, but do you know this Malay guy very well? He turns up occasionally here and there. I cannot tell you more than that, professional secrets and all. Spare us your convictions for once, Udo. I need to know if this Malay is really the guy I'm looking for. He's a doorman in a chic hotel in the 8th District, the Orfe, right? Look, you have no problem communicating with people, Mac, right? Why don't you ask Malay what his job is? I don't want to get involved in all this. If you did know him well, you would have noticed something different. He's mixed up in something, some sort of shady money. You are a pain, McPherson. If I tell you to leave me alone, leave me alone. He claims to have inherited a pile of money. The rest does not interest me. You're not much help, Hulo. But I understand. You don't want to reveal any secrets that may be too compromising. I know. You again. I get the feeling you have got the hots for me. Well, Mele, remember anything yet? What a leech! I've got nothing more to say to you, Mr. McPherson.
again. Sir, I have nothing more to say to you. Sir, aren't you on a case? <laughs>